Hey there, NBT Nation. Adam Spack, certified no boring trainer. Here's a simple tool that's going to help you map out the schedule for a longer training session, whether that be a couple days or even say a week long. One of the challenges when you do that is making sure you have the right topics in the right order for the right length of time that you identify gaps of not enough content to fill the available time or looking for those logical stopping points before you move on to the next topic or the next day. This tool is going to help you sort all of that out quickly and easily. So the idea is very straightforward. You just simply start mapping out the length of your sessions given the time blocks that are available. What I found works really well is don't get bogged down in exactly how long that topic is going to take. Either you already know the answer, so you just map it out, or you take a good educated guess. Don't, don't get wrapped around the axle of this being exact quite yet. So you simply start filling in the time blocks and maybe in the afternoon, you've got a longer session here. And then maybe in the afternoon, you've got a shorter session here, and then you've got sort of a wrap up there. So here we have our first day mapped out for us fairly well. We can duplicate that for the second day. So maybe in the afternoon, for example, we're going to basically kind of have the same schedule, but we might realize that in this particular session, that's a really good stopping point. And we don't really want to introduce a new topic because maybe the next topic is quite lengthy and involved. But we also have a gap here where it's only 4.30 in the afternoon and the session goes to 6 o'clock in this particular example. Aha! Uh -huh. What do we do? Well, now maybe what we find is some smaller topics that we can use to fill those gaps. So we take those couple shorter topics that are maybe not schedule dependent. Maybe that's where we hit a nice to know topic. That's a good way to end the day and isn't so taxing because the, your participants are going to be tired. Maybe you do a review session, something like that. So now you have that end of day time filled, but you're not going into the next topic, which is a longer period of time that sets you up nicely then to go into the Wednesday topic, which maybe is this. Speaking of review sessions, I find that having review sessions at the end of the day is a great way to accomplish a couple things. One is obviously review the material to make sure that they retained the key need to know points from that day's material. It's also good to plug that in in case you have any schedule fluctuations throughout the course of the day. So maybe the afternoon segment here runs a little bit longer. Well, guess what? You now compress down your review session at the end of the day. In this case, instead of a full hour, that review session becomes a half an hour or 15 minutes, something like that. So think about using that review session at the end of the day as a buffer. And if you end up with a full extra hour where you do some review, repetition, some open discussion, some breakout groups, some more practice, or maybe even you, you sneak in a nice to know topic just because it's appropriate to the subject and it would provide extra value. Once you get the schedule rough draft somewhat completed, I find that using color codes are a great way to, to continue to add that visual element to the schedule. Those different color codes then become useful to make sure you're spending enough time on the right topics. If you do use the color coding, that also makes it simple to tally up the total numbers of hours spent throughout the workshop on each topic. You can use that as a quick guide to then determine is that the right balance of time and topics. I really like this approach because then you can quickly see the imbalances. This also helps you to move topics around or you might realize looking at it that one of those particular long subjects, that's just way too much time. You can now compress that time down simply by changing the amount of time on your schedule. And lo and behold, you realize now you have open time to play with that you either fill with another subject or you move something around. 
This tool works especially well if the amount of time for each topic is already known, like I referenced earlier. That's going to make this process super quick because you already know the answer. I'm going to spend three hours on this, one hour on that, 30 minutes on this, whatever. If the time is not known, you then can take this and go back and align the time you've allotted with the material you need to cover. You then refer back to your analysis, you continue to do your design, you work into your development, and then come back to this tool to tweak and refine. But at the end of the day, you end up with a quick visual schedule. And it's a great way to really get a, a good visual indicator that I've got the right topics in the right order with the right amount of time. You identify those logical stopping points and you can clearly see where you're going to have a gap that you need to fill. The training schedule layout tool, super easy, super simple, wildly effective to make sure you don't end up with a boring training session. Let me know what you think. Would you use a tool like this? Let me know. Leave me some comments down below.